Welcome to the awesome chat. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Twitters, in the Twitters, all over the Twitters uh, here in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. And is where we chat, chat with some awesome people doing awesome things in the awesome city of Pittsburgh, typically. Uh, but of course, please check us out, awesomecast.net for this interview and so many others that you can share. And of course, the awesome cast itself. Subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, YouTube, and all kinds of other places. And check out Awesome Cast on the Twitters and the Facebooks. And you can chat with us about what you think is awesome, who we should talk to on this show, and so much more. So we have now, I actually, I, I didn't realize I accidentally did this. Uh, I, I'm wearing like, like all kinds of Ninja Turtle stuff as a fan. And that kind of is very fitting today because we're talking to the one of the guys behind Turtle Mail at AE Dreams. Uh, and Nico Trielzi is on the line right now. How you doing tonight? Hello. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> doing great. So tell me. So, so, of course, as I said, I'm a bit of a fan of, of the ninja variety of turtles. So when I, I saw your device... Oh, geez. Uh, at a uh, coffee club, at, at, at demo day. I can't remember the first time I saw what you guys were, were working on. It kind of captured my attention a little bit. Can you tell me what Turtle Mail is all about? Okay, so Turtle Mail is a mailbox for children. It's a little a physical box that has a little thermal printer on the inside, and it's connected to Wi-Fi. And so what that means is parents and friends and family can send messages to kids from their mobile device to their computer, and kids receive everything as little bits of printed paper. Yeah, so you can see the, the website right there. Um, that's a, that's, we can send images, you can send pictures, you can send um, activity content that we provide. So, so parents can go onto our web app and subscribe them for little word games and drawing activities, and kids get those in addition to their mail. Mm-hmm. So it's um so this is you know again looking at at, at what's going on at at at, at demo day at, at, at Alpha Lab Gear you are officially part of right yes um so typically we're talking about people doing drones three D printing stuff and we have a box with a printer in it mm -hmm. right <laughs> so it's a little yeah. like on yeah. the, on the tech front it, it was a little disarming to to see at first we're like wait what's this you know and and, and at least like from my 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 mind of things um can you like what makes this so special i guess i guess uh, none of the technology is actually strictly new or inventive it's really what we're trying to do is take try to create an experience for kids that is designed for them specifically what we what we saw as a parent my partner and i we we have a little three-year-old daughter together and a lot of our tech toys a lot of our smart toys where we're really just dumbed down versions of adult things like like adult like tablets that you know they shrink them down and make them out of plastic with bumpers on them or little you know phones um there were a lot of it was stuff that was for adults that kids wanted to play with but parents you know don't want to always give them their tablet or their phone they want to you know give them their own little device and so we thought you know you know technology is so amazing nowadays we there should be someone out there creating experiences that are specifically for kids not just not just you know hand them something with a screen on it and then have fun mm -hmm. something that engages them in a creative and imaginative playtime that you know it, it was just something we, we hadn't seen out there and as we were coming up with ideas of oh, what we wanted it to be out there we decided you know let's just try and make this happen like let's do it ourselves we had some experience um from coming from carnegie mellon like we saw what's going on in the entrepreneurial world and it it's really growing in pittsburgh which is great alpha lab gear was a huge uh it was a huge help to us to get our idea off the ground and really got us connected with all the people we needed to be talking to to actually you know realize this dream of ours mm -hmm. so i you know, like I said, it's it's kind of you said it's not you know not not new tech. You're kind of applying it in, in in a new kind of way, and it's very old school in the long way because the end product is 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 something that prints out and and the kid gets an activity. You know, it, it's kind of like you have a slim down kind of acti activity coloring book kind of situation, right? Like like is is that am I getting the right idea about this? Um, I, I guess we. we... We don't see ourselves, or we don't see Turtle Mail as replacing like everything the kid does as far as playtime. Really, it 
it'll print out a few messages a day, a few activities, enough to give them, you know, 20, 30 minutes of time that, you know, away from a screen, whether they're doing something hands-on, whether it be drawing or thinking of a puzzle or riddles and or coming up with a, a storyline. So it, it it does, you know, it does have the coloring book aspect to it where, you know, kids, you know, love coloring when the lines are outside of them. Um, but we don't see ourselves as replacing everything that happens during playtime. We we want Turtle Mail to enhance it, to engage kids in in a way that gets them creating their own new play experience. Certainly, and, and I noticed here. Uh, so, in, in the video that we showed, if you guys are on the video version, I saw that you could like like they, they had the, the stuffed dog, and you can take a picture of the dog and kind of have a uh, looks like it was a toy profile. Can you can you talk yeah. a little bit about what that concept's about? Yes, the toy profile. That is a feature that we're working on where. A parent can go into the web app and create a profile for the child's favorite toy, whether it be a stuffed animal or an action figure, some some toy that they already have that they love. And you can take a picture of it. You can enter in uh, personality traits that the child associates with the toy. And from those key words, we will um, create messages to the child on behalf of the toy, creating this sort of illusion that you know the toy is sending messages that is responding to things that they that they do together so if the parent you know makes a note there that they go outside to the park sometimes we can send messages from the toy that says oh i had so much fun in the park you know can we go on some slides can we go on the swing uh stuff like that that's awesome like i said we i i i sent some emails out to our 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 awesome parents of the awesome cast uh, to kind of get their ideas around. I had them go check out the website and the videos and everything. And, and you know, since I'm not a parent, so I want to make sure there's that perspective there, uh, which may be a little bit why I'm kind of uh, want to make sure I'm wrapping my head around the concept a little better. Right. Um, so, so uh, our friend Brian Davitek on the Twitter, uh, he's saying he loves the idea the ability to send your own messages as well as integration with other services. Is fantastic. Uh, he thinks one of the keys for this is we'll be able to prevent it from becoming stale, which, which you're, you're actually putting customized messages out there, uh, from the parents. So I, I'd say it's kind of always going to be something like he, he sees this as maybe like the ability to, uh, say, Hey, it's picture day. And maybe put a little reminder to your kid. Hey, don't forget to dress up for, for picture day. It, it, do you, is that the kind of, uh, concept that you guys are seeing kind of applying through this maybe? We, we, we've had a few parents who have been interested in sending sort of utilitarian messages to their kids, like their chore list or, you know, little reminders. We've also seen uh, grandparents who are excited because they live in a different state than their, than their grandkid. Mm-hmm. And so they want to send, you know, I, I love you. I'm thinking about you. Little notes to them, little, little love notes. And it's, we're, we're really trying to incorporate all those ideas. We're trying to, we're trying to, Make it an open enough where anyone can can you know use it the way they want. Whether you know, whether or not they're sending um, reminders to their kids, or just you know saying, "Hey, how's it how's it going? I can't wait to see you." Because maybe they're away on business. They want to remind their kids they're coming home soon. So there's we're, we're trying to leave it open ended where you know people can use it in their own little way, and we yeah you know, we definitely don't want it to become stale. Um, with the activity content, we're we're creating enough. For we're we're trying to create enough so that kids have enough for three or three to five messages a day, and then it'll scale up over time. So we're have we have activities that are for three year olds, four year olds, five year olds, and so we can we can always adjust the level that they're at, and parents mm-hmm. will be able to have a feature where they can um they can scale up. Say they they have a three year old who's quite bright, they could scale up the activity content for a four or five year old and, and sort of re-engage them and challenge them if they want to. That's awesome. So, so is this like something that you kind of set up these activities kind of in a queue and, and, and they kind of they kind of spit out like, you know, in the kids' playroom like throughout the day or how, how does that work? Um, our, our sort of envisioned uh, experience is that it prints once a day. Mm-hmm. Very, very similar to mail that, you know, you just receive it once a day and parents will have the option to, to set what time it prints out. Um, so it could, we, we usually envision that it prints out right before the child comes home from school. That way they get home, they can see that they have some mail there waiting for them and maybe they do 
20 to 30 minutes of some activity content before they, you know, do their homework or, you know, go outside to play, but it gives them something that they can, that they can expect. That's awesome. That's awesome. Why a turtle? <laughs> the, the story behind this, so we were, when we had settled on the idea of messaging kids and like that this is really some sort of mailbox for them, um, we, we wanted it to be something that, that engage in that sort of taught them a little bit about patience and you know it's not something that's on demand they can't press a button and just receive more mail over and like it, it's we want them to understand that this is a time thing something they have to wait for be patient for so we it wasn't quite as slow as snail mail and it's <laughs> it's still we had to align it was a, it still beats the rabbit in the end and the rabbit was email which is just you know very quick and you know didn't what well, wasn't very uh special it wasn't something that you could hold on to like our printed messages but uh and, and you know, the, the idea of a turtle just, it just came up and um as we were designing um the the shape of a turtle kind of meshed really well with uh the mailbox that we've tried to that we that we've tried to design it to look like um and so yeah and and it, it just sounded it just sounded right and we we had talked about you know changing the name, trying to make it something more uh, more startupy. Like there's all kinds of like goofy little names out there for startup toys, um, but we really liked that it, it's Turtle Mail. It was a very basic name. It it made sense once you heard what it was about. You didn't have to. It wasn't something that you would forget because it was just very very easy to remember. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So so t- I saw you guys had a Kickstarter campaign. Uh, recently, yeah. uh, and, and and of course, like I said, I ran to, into you guys on on, on the Clemente Breads uh, a, <laughs> a few months ago. Uh, what was it? Was that there? In, uh, was it the regatta or? or? The, the, it, well, yeah, it was the uh, the Three Rivers Regatta, which ended up getting canceled, but all the events still happened. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there was apparently debris in the river that they couldn't race the boats. But well, uh, it was great to talk to one of your staff while I was trying to eat a gyro on the bridge uh, <laughs> walking. So you know that. that that there's, there's that it's very Pittsburgh of, of it. It's like oh, I remember seeing you guys, you know. <laughs> so, um, but but you know, I can tell you guys were we're kind of uh, getting getting the word out there for the Kickstarter, getting some feedback. It seemed. Um, how has that been going? How receptive have parents been uh, uh, to to this idea? So whenever we go out to these events, um, we we line all our turtle mails out in front. Um, we usually have kids run up and grab them and. <laughs> And uh, parents are like, no, don't touch that. But we're, well, we, we do that intentionally. Usually it's just, they're just empty boxes because we want to show what they're going to look like. And we keep the prototypes um, towards the back of the table. That way we can show people how it works. But uh, kids are instantly drawn to them because they, they look interesting. Um, we're able to color them however we want since they're actually they're wooden mailboxes. Um, and so, so we can paint them. We can leave them as raw wood. So kids are drawn to them. And parents... It usually takes maybe five seconds for them to actually get it. We just we have the, the line, we have turtle mail, the mailbox for children that receives and prints messages from friends and family. There's a little thermal printer, blah, 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 all that. And by the time we, we get through that second sentence, they've pretty much got it. And we've gotten a lot of positive feedback. I, usually the only negative feedback is we, we get people who are paranoid about security. And that's something we're very conscious of, and we're, we're we're definitely trying to make sure that all the information messaging is secure, encrypted, and we're not um, enabling you know malicious messages to kids uh, or advertising. Are they concerned the turtle is watching them and their kids? Uh, no, we, we're definitely <laughs> close. There's no there's no camera, there's no camera in it or microphone or anything like that. It's, right. When we show it off, it's it's a little small thermal printer. Uh, connected to a little board, and um, it's yeah. <laughs> no, no one's no one's worried about that. It's watching all the time. Mm-hmm. So it looks like um um uh you guys have a price here at ninety nine ninety nine, but that's more than just like just like oh it's a box with a printer in it. Like that, that that's like you have a website, you have kind of an infrastructure be- behind this as well, right? Yes, yes. The price includes all the software and all the activity that we're providing. We're not um we're not we we say you know. Parents can subscribe their kids to activity content, but that just means they go on the website and they check off, you know, I want my kid to receive crossword puzzles. We don't, we don't, 
make people accrue any additional fees or anything like that. We're we're parents ourselves, and we're, we're we see you know little tiny ninety nine uh, micro transactions here and there, and it, it drives us <laughs> crazy. And so, as parents, we all we're always conscious of you know what what do we hate, so let's not do that. Um, so everything is included. The ninety nine you know one hundred dollar price mark is really just you get the box and access to everything that's on the web app. We would only really charge extra if we ever partnered with like a major company and we needed to license their, their content. And we're, we're going to definitely try to be very clear that, you know, this is premium content. This is definitely something extra. We want Turtle Mail to, to be functional right out of the box and, and, you know, something that you don't have to set it up. It's not too difficult to set up and, and subscriptions and all that kind of stuff. It, it drives people and parents crazy. It, I don't know if you can answer this or not, but is 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 a Ninja Turtles a considerable license that you may be pursuing, <laughs> <laughs> or at least it's, dreaming of pursuing? <laughs> it's, it's definitely we would definitely love to partner with any of the the major sort of content creators. We want we we want Turtle Mail to be kind of a platform. We had we have a, a business model where we're trying to actually. Um, encourage companies who are creating characters and who have these licenses to to use Turtle Mail as a way to reach kids through their characters um, in a way that you know isn't on a screen or isn't uh, on a TV show or something like that. Um, we want we want kids to be able to receive messages from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles or any of the characters like that, and um, it's it's something we haven't pursued just yet because we're still very small. And those kind of deals, you know, people want to see, you know, is this a big thing, is this a big hit? So it's something that we definitely look forward to uh, figuring out in the future. But, um, yeah, right right now it's, we're trying to create our own content. And we're sticking to characters that um, sort of the, the open source, I guess, uh, pub, public domain characters. So one of the big ones we can definitely use now that uh, just became public domain recently was uh, Sherlock Holmes. Oh. So we're going to create. We're going to be creating some, um, I guess, clue-based mystery activities for kids, and we can we can use Sherlock Holmes because he's now in the public domain. That's awesome. So uh, these emails, and, and if you'd like, I can forward you these feedback emails I got on the product uh, from our oh, from people. Uh, but one concern is 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 the paper. Am, am, yeah. Is it going to be hard and in our cost for me to fill it up on this paper? What do you have to solve that problem? Yes. So yeah, the paper is, I guess, it's the only reoccurring cost. Mm-hmm. It, um, from what we've tested, the standard roll that you can buy at Staples mm-hmm. can can usually last on average about a month. So um, depending on how long messages are, we'll be able to to tell when when a uh, roll is running out based on how long uh, messages are. But we we will be providing um, paper through our website. It, it will yeah, we will be charging paper but um we're trying to keep that cost as low as possible we just the only reason we want to sell the paper through us is to be able to recommend a good brand that has quality paper that the prints actually last on there's a lot of really cheap thermal paper out there and a lot, a lot of it actually has bpa in it which is something we're also very conscious of um bpa and there's there's there's, an, there's another acronym for a chemical that um that we're we're steering completely clear of those and recommending brands that carry, you know, paper that is very safe for kids mm-hmm. and of, of a very good quality. And those you can usually get them for about a, a dollar a roll. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so it's it, it's not too expensive of a reoccurring cost, but um, it, it's something that they can go to Staples if they wanted to. They don't have to go through it. Right, I, I just took a l- real quick look up, and I saw like a pack of five for like six bucks, you know, stuff like yeah. that. So, uh, yeah, yeah it, it, it's, it's pretty standard, like like receipt paper, basically, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's yeah, it's nothing. The technology we're using is nothing new. It's been in cash registers and ATM machines for a very long time, so it, it makes it easy for people to get a hold of the paper. Good, good. Stay away from that proprietary bit there. So, like I say, you were part of uh, the Alpha Lab gear process. Um, I'm always interested in in what point were you guys at going into the cycle at Alpha Lab gear? And if those don't know, Alpha Lab is a, a really cool uh, um, um, 
incubation program for startups here in the city. And and Gear is the um, is the Gear version, I guess. It's more than just software. It's it's you have a product, right? And and there's other concerns when you have to build something like that. Um, and they run in cycles. So so can you tell us a little bit about your experience there? Like what did going through that kind of uh, help you? get from like uh you know point b to point d and what you know kind of what were those yeah so so gear was great they call themselves a hardware accelerator right um th- yeah they use the term accelerator instead of incubator because they provide funding which is something that incubators generally don't um include but the the process so when we first got there it was great there were you know um about 10 teams and you know, a lot of pizza and ping pong and icebreakers <laughs> for everyone to everyone to kind of get to know themselves or get, get to know everyone else. And it was it was great because all the companies were different. Everyone was kind of at a different stage, um, and we all worked in this large collaborative workspace, which was it was an incredible experience because it was almost like you were part of a bigger company. You had. It, you could go to anyone, like in, we have these bays with big garage doors that come down if you need privacy, but everyone has their own little 10 by 10 office. Um, and, and it, so, so if you had any questions or you had any concerns, you could always go to like the startup next door and say, Hey, how are you guys doing? How are you handling it? And, you know, everyone was really great about working with each other. Um, everyone helped each other out when they needed to. There's, we, there's a bunch of videos um, that a lot of companies ended up recording as an advertisement that includes members from other startups. So everyone was willing to pitch in when they, when when someone else needed help, and it was it was definitely a great experience. I don't know how it would have been very different starting a company without that experience. It it really it changed how we viewed the startup scene. And it changed how we we even approached you know so this, there were, we got a lot of good ideas we probably wouldn't have been the same the same company um, had we not gone through the through the process and been exposed to you know all the connections that we made and the people that we met. Awesome, and also a part of the big demo day event uh, that they have uh, at least the last couple of years. It was so big they're down at Stage AE there on the north side. Uh, so it's a, it's a really cool kind of display of, uh, hey, here's all the interesting stuff happening uh, in Pittsburgh uh, out of just this one thing. And, and Alpha Lab is not the only game in town either. So um, so what do you think about So as far as uh, being a, a Pittsburgh-based startup, uh, you know, uh, there's always the, well, it's not San Francisco. And you always hear that <laughs> kind of stuff. And, and every time I hear my, my podcast talking about technology, it's like, oh, they're from Pittsburgh. Of all things, and with, with, like the you know the concept, there's a lot of stuff coming from freaking Pittsburgh. Um, yeah. Can you tell me what do you think about the scene here? As and I don't know how much you've looked into the other scenes, I guess, uh, in your process here going through this. Um, uh, what what is what is the kind of temperature of, of, of doing a startup here in Pittsburgh now? So there, I would say that it's definitely growing. It's nowhere near as big as you know New York or San Francisco. Um, or even Seattle, it, there's there are a few large companies that like to see you know local tech startups coming up and they and they they try and help out where they can. But it's it's definitely something that's growing somewhat at a at a I guess I would say it's just a normal rate. It's not something that's booming or something that's that's exploding. It's it's something that there, there's a little bit of caution from what I've noticed that that. A lot of the, the big players in the entrepreneurial field, they're not taking big risks. They're not they're not investing hundreds of millions in the company. There's the money that's out there is very very cautious, which is understandable because you know there's there there are other places to invest in, and until you know people start really seeing that Pittsburgh is going to be this 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 hot spot of um, entrepreneurship, then it's, it's it's going to take a little while, but um, what Pittsburgh does have in abundance is the ideas. So there are there are tons of people out there coming up with new ideas all the time. And um, what's great about Pittsburgh? It's such a livable city that you know rent is way cheaper than anywhere in New York or San Francisco. That people can people can pursue their dreams while still you know 
maintaining, you know, their apartments and whatever. Like it, it, it's, you're not going to go, you're not going to go bankrupt living in Pittsburgh trying to <laughs> create your company. Right, right, right. That's awesome. So, uh, other than that, so uh, where are you guys at with the process? I see that uh, pre-orders are live now, and you have a lot of uh, varieties. I'm noticing over here uh, of, of your of your turtle males. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yes. Yeah. So um, we are taking pre-orders right now. Um, we are delivering in April, so this is going to be our first big production run. We're looking to we're, we're we have manufacturing partnerships that we're starting up. And we're going to be uh, hopefully producing them um, by the beginning of beginning of the year, and be able to ship them out to, uh, to people by April. Um, the different variations. I think do we have the yeah we do have the colored ones up there now. Um, the colored ones uh, also feature like some little name tags that sit there, and um, some additional um, some additional features. I think one of them includes um, the custom handwriting which is something we want to make available to parents where they, we send them a sheet that has all the letters of the alphabet in it and they can write out all the letters in their handwriting and then we'll convert that into a font so parents can send messages and it appears in their own handwriting. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, and then uh, we're also working on the custom designed ones. So those will probably be um, probably be hand-painted or stencil art. We're, we're still working out the exact details on how um, those will work out. Yeah, so you can see the uh, the Pittsburgh Bridge one that we have there. Um, and yeah, so we're we're, we're going to be working with um, a couple of designs to get some, some customized mailboxes out there. And then we do have the regular green one, and um, it's not pictured there, but we will be also selling the, the wooden ones, which um, will just be plain uh, plain wood that allows kids to you know color on them, paint them themselves, or decorate them however they want. We want to be able to sell the shell separately. That way, um, because the way it works is that that whole top curvature um, comes off from the base, and the base is what holds all the components on the inside. Mm. And so you'll be able to slide off the shell and either change it out or um, or you know paint it however you like. So maybe you know someone might want to decorate one for Halloween or you know the holiday seasons and. Um, they can, they can have a customized mailbox for the, for the occasion. Awesome. Awesome. So go check it out. Where can people go check out aedreams.com? And where else are you guys online? Uh, ju- actually, just, just our website now. That, that's, um, that's where we're trying to take pre-orders. We're trying to keep everything uh, contained. We don't want to expand too quickly. Um, we see, we've seen a lot of companies you know, rush to the market and uh, suffer from, you know, bad Amazon reviews and stuff like that where people didn't understand, you know, this is a startup company where we're trying to get things launched. We, we're really trying to build a, a small but growing um, group of uh, initial users that can then, you know, comment, tell us what they like, and uh, if we ever need to improve the product, we can, we can do so with their, with their commentary. Awesome. Go check it out. This is a fun, it's a fun thing. It's something for the kids. Uh, some cool stuff coming out here. And uh, as I and as I rock my Ninja Turtles in support of Turtle <laughs> Mail today, should I put the mask on while I'm at it here? I don't know. I got the full thing. Now it's not over the headphones. But uh, thank you so much, Nico, for joining us. Check them out at aedreams.com and uh, follow them on social media and uh, and share it. Share it so other people find out what, uh, what these guys are doing over here. And also, please check out awesomecast.net. Share this show if you're digging what we're doing here. And also, if you can support us on the main show at patreon.com slash awesomecast. And, uh, and, and find out so much more and uh, subscribe to us uh, with all the links over there at awesomecast.net, social media, everywhere. Thank you so much. Uh, Nico, you have been my awesome guest today. Uh, you guys Thank have you been, very much. You guys have been my awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs> this show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.